specific plans and options for Ann Arbor? Well, if it proven me right, it would be one of the rare times of my life. Um, the, it, it has turned out to be absolutely right. I come back to my belief that you have to go with the grain of Afghan culture here. We could go to crush the Taliban or to fight in conventional ways, and in fact I think that would just make the problem worse. And so what we are doing now is trying, again, to work with the population, work with the government, and even to telegraph to the enemy, because I believe we've got, once we get the people on our side, then the, the Taliban really don't have uh, much strength to draw on. And so I'm very comfortable that that model right now is what we need to work for big ops. Now, there are still smaller operations, special operations and things like that, targeting, targeting individuals that we protect tremendously with uh, operational security. Gentlemen, unless, did you want the opportunity to make some closing remarks? We have a few more moments. Do you want to do that? Yeah, or, a couple of things. One of the things that I don't think that uh, I've been effective in communicating well enough is some of the changes that we've done. I've talked about them before, but it goes back to the idea of trying to make this effort different than it has been in several ways. The first, Ambassador mentioned, having Afghan leadership. President Karzai reviewed, approved the operation for Mars. He was the commander-in-chief of that operation, and that's how I see the future. We were partnered at every step of the way in the planning and then the execution of this as we talked shoulder to shoulder with the Afghans. And that will only get better as their forces and their processes get stronger. We've also done a number of things in terms of trying very hard to reduce civilian casualties, trying very hard to operate methodically in ways we could have taken Marja in the first night, but the amount of damage and the number of casualties would have been much, much higher, and in my view that would have probably left us in a much worse position, and maybe in a much, much worse position. In the world of detainees, we've also started something under JTF 435 to get complete transparency in detainees, so every individual that's detained by coalition forces, Afghan or coalition, the family or the, the local leaders of their village can find out their status right away. That's been something that's bothered them for years. And then if we've opened the, the detaining facility in Parwan, the DFIP as we call it, already we've started the process to transition that to full Afghan control so that hopefully by 1 January of next year that will be Afghan-led with some coalition assistance to do that. Again, those are all things that I think underpin Afghan sovereignty, it underpin Afghan ownership and responsibility for the war, which we think is necessary, and we, we want to operate in a way that the Afghan people believe this is their war that's going to come out in a way that is best for them, as opposed to, I think many in the past have had, right or wrong, a perception that it is a war owned and fought by foreigners on their terrain. It'll take a long time to make this point, but. But that's really the thrust of where we're trying to go. Just a final point from me. We've talked very much uh, at the operational level today about Marja and Kandahar and so on. And what I just want to do is remind you that many of the themes we've discussed down at that local level actually apply to the campaign as a whole. Uh, and if we look at General McChrystal's plan and then, and then some of the refinements that have been made uh, subsequently, essentially there are three things we're trying to achieve this year. First is to regain the initiative against the insurgency, largely through the kind of partnered security operations that we've been describing today and, and that you know, we've, we've evidenced through, the, through these particular grassroots examples. Second, we're trying to develop and, and strengthen Afghan government capabilities, civil and military, so that they can deliver for their people and their people feel a genuine sense of allegiance to them. And then thirdly, we've talked a lot about the politics, we need a political strategy to produce a, a balanced political settlement down at village level, right the way up to the national level, and indeed across the border between Afghanistan and Pakistan and the region, that <clears throat> drains um, from the insurgency the fuel of all of these political grievances, the sense of disenfranchisement um, that uh, really um, gives much of the insurg insurgency its impetus. And so those three elements, regaining the initiative, building Afghan institutions, and inclusive political settlement, uh, is really what we've been talking about at the operational level today, but those are going to be the themes that you'll see operating at the macro level as well um, over the next uh, 18 months 
uh, in partnership between ourselves and the Afghans and by pursuing those um, with the purpose that we've brought to these specific operations uh, we believe and I think the Afghans are gradually coming to believe that we can bring this campaign to a successful conclusion. Thank you, General. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you.